Ooh, I can create a private draft? Underdog, you legends! You couldn't do this before. Share this draft, fetching link. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna get like the eight or nine pick. Ooh. Okay, there's the link. There's the link. Get in, get in, get in, get in. Let's do a draft. Yeah. Let's fill it. How many y'all want to draft? I'm going to give you guys like 30 seconds and then I'm going to tweet it. So y'all got 30 seconds. Viewers advantage. If you are live here on Twitch, we're all going to stream snipe you. Of course. Four spots left. Three spots left. Two, one. One spot. Who's going to be the last one in? Phil. He's a legend. I didn't even have to tweet it out. All right, we're gonna do a 12 man, $3 sit and go draft here on Underdog Fantasy. Me against the viewers. I am going to get stream sniped relentlessly for the next 30 or 40 minutes here. Hey, I got the 12 pick. I like the 12. Pick. My preferred picks are anywhere one through five and then backwards from 12 through six. I've fallen here in the seven, eight, nine an absolute metric ton so this is going to be interesting hustle manford a can opener fuckinator that's an f-o-c-k-n-ator pace chaz streamer bell bd7733 final x1x mongo haku and cub suck 2004 they are going to be here on the show with us today we're going to do this draft 30 seconds hustle manford is already on i'll turn on the let's do this pop that out there you go you guys can see the, the draft as it goes along. Justin Jefferson, first overall. JT is still available at three. Underdog blocked on your work computer. Hate to see it, Frostbite. Jay Taylor. You know, I always think of uh, Phineas and Ferb when I see your name. I always think of Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Cooper Cup at four. Jamar Chase. So much pressure drafting on stream. Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, don't mess up. Say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. We're live on Twitch. This is a sit and go league. So like the differences between drafting a tournament team and a sit and go team. Uh, the tournament teams have a 14 week regular season. Mike Evans at eight, aggressive. Um, the difference between drafting a sit and go team versus a tournament team. A sit and go team, you don't need as much correlation. Correlation isn't gonna hurt you so much, but like it's more about value. It's more about getting the players that uh, you think are gonna score the most fantasy points because it's a 17 week total points regular season draft tournaments 14 week regular season uh and followed oh i hate you guys followed up by i'm gonna do something weird i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this cd lamb and travis kelsey to start so it's about projecting the most fantasy points that you can get and if you are not going to have to play those playoff weeks at weeks 15 16 17 where tournament best ball turns into like dfs that's where the correlation is really wanted and needed on those teams in sit and go it's just about total points it's about roster construction it's about having the best lineup so like i'm not going to break my back to overly correlate these teams but i'm not going to shy away from it either but in tournaments i am going to try and draft players ahead of adp uh to get the the type of roster construction that i like as opposed to you know or the theme of that draft the thesis that that you have for that draft as opposed to with a sit and go league where I just want to stack as many points as possible. Is it crazy to draft Dalvin Cook over McCaffrey? I probably would not be drafting Dalvin Cook over Christian McCaffrey. Debo Samuel at 18, DeAndre Swift at 19, Tyreek Hill at 20. I'm interested to see where you see like this. If this was a tournament draft, everybody would be able to see where I want to go. Uh, that's in our draft room and like we're drafting live on Twitch. So uh, the chat is reading right along next to me with what i'm doing they're listening to what i'm saying it's only like a five second delay um so like they're gonna try and stream snipe me or take players that they think i'm i'm targeting but like if it was a tournament draft where it's like oh al has two receivers from the he went uh keenan allen and mike williams he clearly is gonna try and grab herbert in the next round not as necessary week 17 correlation not as necessary in a sit and go draft uh so these would be kind of the cash game type drafts the sit and go ones as opposed to the tournament ones where all the money is up top in the tournaments and in a sit and go you just got to finish top three and you make money so and they also have 50 50 ones you just got to finish in the top half of the league to make money if you are playing mock drafts if you're doing mock drafts uh don't just just stop right now instead of doing a mock draft 
Go do like a $3 50-50 draft. Go do a 10-team or a 12-team, depending on what you have, uh, for $3, $1, whatever. You will get more out of doing a sit-and-go best ball draft for super cheap than you will by doing a mock draft, where after two, three rounds, you're drafting against whoever's list is on the site, and you know who the next five picks are going to be because five teams are on autopilot, and it's just going to take the highest player on the list. You don't learn anything. You don't learn where you have to zig or zag. You don't learn where you have to take players ahead of ADP. Uh, and it's just, you're, you're not going to get as much out of it uh, to make yourself a better player as you will if you're doing a uh, a real money best ball draft. Alvin Kamara going at 26. That's a little bit ahead of ADP. Uh, it does not appear that he is going to get a suspension going into this season. He had fallen as low as like pick 33 on ADP. I think right now he's around 29, uh, if if I remember what his daily ADP update was. Steph Diggs paired with Josh Allen. Don't hate it. Like not even a little bit. James Conner at 34, right around ADP. Ezekiel Elliott going ahead of ADP there. DJ Moore right before him. Darren Waller goes there. Now I can do an interesting thing here. I don't know if I'm going to do the interest. Javante Williams is a glaring value. At 36, when he is an ADP of 23, I'm going to take the value there and hope for the upside. He currently is not the all the time back, but uh, he certainly is uh, has the possibility of being the RB1 on the season if they give him 70% of the snaps or if Melvin Gordon uh, happens to get injured. I'm going to go double tight end in this spot and shut somebody out. I've got two elite tight ends, Travis Kelsey and Kyle Pitts. This is a 17-week schedule. Uh, and I can utilize my flex with a tight end in this spot because I'm going to lock in 15, let's say 14 to 20 fantasy points a week at tight end with both of those guys. I know that I can get wide receivers that can get me some points. I think that there are running backs that can get me some points as well. Uh, I do want to try and make sure in most best ball drafts that by round eight on underdog, I have at least four wide receivers right now through four rounds i have one so i'm probably going to be going a little bit more wide receiver heavy as this draft kind of moves along uh, a lot of people went running back heavy already let's do this Turn up here and maybe i can pull off something here because pitts was a value where i was choosing him and javante williams was a value where i was choosing him so i got good value in rounds three and four um which could force people's hands on tight ends and put them in bad spots Lamar Jackson at 39, Travis Etienne at 42. That's below ADP. He's been going like the 30s. He's gotten out of hand. I don't mind him as much in the fourth round, but like there's a very distinct possibility that he's like Naheem Hines or JD McKissick, right? That he's Chase Edmonds. Like what if Travis Etienne is Chase Edmonds? Chase Edmonds is going around pick 90 something and Travis Etienne's going in the 30s. His ADP right now to me is egregious uh, based on the fact that I believe that it elevated with the thinking that James Robinson was not going to be around for like the first half of the season minimum, and Etienne was going to get 75 to 90% of the workload. Robinson is there and practicing, and if he is going to eat up like 40 to 60% of the running back work, and Etienne is essentially a pass catching back who might carry it 10 times a game, he does not look like a 20 to 25 touch a game workhorse. And on an offense that is not super you know, talented right now. Dalton Schultz and Dallas Goddard going at the 4-5 turn. Tight ends are coming off the board fast. Justin Herbert at 46, currently uh, the odds-on favorite to lead the league in terms of touchdown passes. Brees Hall at 52. I'd much rather have Brees Hall at 52 than Travis Etienne, uh, 35 to 40 something. Like, just personally. No offense to BD7733, just a comment on the players. Brees Hall does project to be the absolute workhorse on a similar talented, similarly talented offense from a touchdown creation perspective. Uh, going to get all the carries, going to get as much work in the passing game as he can handle. Uh, I think that there is, I think Etienne would need to be in like the 50s to 60s for me to, to be interested. McCaffrey, Andrews, Kamara, Judy, Juju Smith-Schuster for a can opener. Solid. Very solid team there. Brandon Cooks, perpetual value, Brandon Cooks, every single year. He's just kind of there. What are my thoughts on CEH? When does he start becoming concerned? I like him at ADP. He's fine at ADP. I have no issues with CEH. Dak Prescott uh, at 56. DK Metcalf. Kyler Murray. Don't play him on the weeks where Call of Duty has a uh, double XP weekend. Try not to do it. Two picks coming up for me here. Hmm. I like Godwin. I do like Godwin. I need wide receivers. 
in my opinion. I'm going to go with Godwin and hope that he's ready earlier in the season. I'm not buying in on Cooper. Rashad Bateman's nice, but low volume offense like Adam Thielen, but I love Elijah Moore. Uh, I'm, I'm drafting more Elijah Moore than I think I can handle. And I'm hoping that that Jets offense takes a step forward uh, because his talent is solid. And I like everything else that they've done with that offense, adding Garrett Wilson. Uh, Corey Davis is a solid professional wide receiver. I think that Zach Wilson takes a bit of a leap in, in year two, even though the, the reports from camp are that Joe Flacco is outperforming. Hey guys, the reports from camp are that Jamar Chase couldn't catch a ball this time last year. Remember that? Remember when Jamar Chase couldn't catch a ball because it didn't have stripes on it? Play that stuff down. Kyler and Hollywood retire to be pro gamers in the offseason. You know, it, it might happen. I tweeted this out earlier this morning. Like there was a, a Reddit post comparing and contrasting Kyler Murray's statistics on weeks where there was a double XP or triple XP weekend on Call of Duty versus the weeks where there was not a double or triple XP weekend on Call of Duty. And his numbers were markedly worse on weekends where there was a double or triple XP weekend in Call of Duty. Not saying that he's, you know, not spending time in the film room or, you know, not actually doing his work, but also it's just weird. He's up grinding Call of Duty until like three, four in the morning, just trying to get those, uh, those rare skins, those weapon skins, all the other stuff. I don't even play Call of Duty. So like, I don't know exactly what you got. I know you get more XP. You're going to level up on those weekends. But he is not going to score as many fantasy points for us. Elijah Mitchell, Hunter Renfro, AJ Dillon, and his calves. Thank you for linking the Kyler tweet in chat. I have I have the best mods. We have a lot of good things on this on this Twitch channel. We have the best mods. We have like 40 of the best emotes on Twitch.tv. It's undeniable. It's just science. It's been back tested. Josh Jacobs, 75. Uh so let's see. We've got Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, Justin Herbert, Mike Williams. Uh, T Higgins on that team, all the second, all the wide receiver twos, Thielen, Williams, Higgins. I mean, Deontay is the wide receiver one there. IMO. Michael Thomas. What are your thoughts on Michael Thomas? Do you think that he comes back to be the player that he was after missing basically two seasons? Or do you think that that offense is going to throw it a ton? I like what I'm seeing out of Chris Olave in camp. And if the deep throws that they're targeting him with keep up, they'll mesh very well. Skill set wise, from like Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas doing the short to intermediate stuff and Olave being the deep threat, uh, those things just kind of fit together. A lot like, not not one to one, but a lot like Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill just kind of fit together from a schematic point of view for an offense or an offensive coordinator or a quarterback because you're putting pressure on defenses with players that can win at multiple levels at the same time. Kadarius Tony kind of wanted him there. Did not get him. DeAndre Hopkins suspended for the first six weeks of the season. Cubs is up, and then it's me with back-to-back -back picks here. Tom Brady. Love Tom Brady. He's awesome. Uh, player that I believe that I'm much higher on than the field at this spot. Brandon Ayuk. Last year, I was Debo over Ayuk when Ayuk was a third rounder and Debo was a sixth rounder. You can go back and check this uh, on YouTube with my videos that I put out on the main channel uh, last season. So for me, getting him there is solid, and I'm going to take the value and take Trey Lance. Not for the fact that I'm pairing him with him, but he is a big value there. Trey Lance um, is going to score fantasy points this year. I believe that Ayuk, independent of Trey Lance, is a good value here at the end of the seventh round, top of the uh, eighth round. There's not going to be that big of a drop or that big of a volume difference, in my opinion, from Debo to Ayuk. But the ADP difference being, you know, one being a middle of the second round pick to now one being a seventh, eighth round pick is massive. Trey Lance has a possibility of ending the season as the QB1, which is going to make some people vomit in their mouth and, and recoil in anger. But hear me out. Y'all hated Jalen Hurts last year. All summer when I said, y'all need to draft Jalen Hurts. He's my QB7, my QB8. You need to draft Jalen Hurts. Uh... Every reply, again, go back and check those videos and look at the replies to this. Jalen Hurts sucks. He's going to be bagging groceries in a couple of years. He's not a quarterback. He's an insurance salesman. He's going to be selling cars like, uh, he's terrible. Okay. When you have a quarterback 
who's going to run the ball eight to 12 times per game. They're going to add eight to 11 points in rushing fantasy points every single game. That's their floor. You know that's coming every single game. Whatever they throw for is gravy. We know that this San Francisco offense has excelled at throwing the ball five yards and less from the line of scrimmage. Getting the ball in the hands of George Kittle, in the hands of Brandon Ayuk, in the hands of Debo Samuel, three of the top players in the league in terms of yards after catch, yards after first contact, and breaking tackles. All Trey Lance has to do is essentially make long handoffs to those three talented pass catchers and let them do the work after the catch, much like Jimmy G did last year. So many points for Jimmy G were scored after the catch. There weren't a lot of air yards where he was getting points on air yards. He was throwing the ball less than five yards, less than 10 yards from the line of scrimmage and letting the receivers do the work, one, based on their talent, two, based on the scheme uh, that Shanahan puts in there. So now put in Trey Lance, who's going to run you know, and get me eight to 12 fantasy points per game on the ground. And especially in a sit and go league where I don't need to correlate as much, love Trey Lance uh, at his price point. Now in tournament best ball, bit of a different story. I'm not as in on Trey Lance in tournament best ball as I would be in total points only. Just score me as many points as you can, big dog. Uh, I like Trey Lance in this particular scenario. He has a stronger arm than Jimmy G, uh, negligible clearly nowhere near as accurate and his decision making is bad and his fundamentals are bad but like he'll get there eventually or he'll be out of the league which i don't think is going to happen so i'm my bet is on him getting there in the next couple of years he can just do things athletically that jimmy g cannot do dawson knox going at 103 damian harris at 104 that was like a round after ramondre stevenson who i like a whole lot i don't know if i like him a round and a half ahead but i like him this is where chat has screwed me They've taken all of my players that I like in this range at running back, which is kind of forcing me onto one of two players that I don't love at running back. Uh, Cordell Patterson at 108. I don't like the offense. You know, I, I don't I don't like that team like at all. Let me take Garrett Wilson. I do like that offense. Not trying to load up on the Jets, but like based on where they were being picked, I do like that. Where did, oh, to, where did Kadarius Tony go in this draft? Darius Tony went at 81. We were drafting him. God, back in my, you, this is a Pepperidge Farm remembers moment. Do you remember when Kadarius Tony was going around like pick 100 to 110? Pepperidge Farm remembers. He's up to like 79 on ADP right now. Would Underdog or DK let you make a small best ball tournament like you have for daily during the season? I don't know. Like just for our community? Like a little single entry one? I don't know. I'd have to ask. I know some people over there. I'll ask. Aaron Rodgers does look like one of the better values at quarterback this season. Stafford going at 93, it's about on par. Russ Wilson went behind ADP at 95. Derek Carr right about where he gets drafted. Jahan Dotson. I got Dotson here. See, nobody cares. God, he really became a thing, didn't he? He went from being like the guy that nobody cared about in the first Jurassic Park movie to being like the big baddie in the last one. Spoiler alert. Is it like, how bad was that last Jurassic Park movie? It was not good. I just watched it with the kids. It was not, no. Oof. Jalen Tolbert at 119. Michael Gallup at the 10 11 turn for Hustle Manford. And now we wait. I'm interested to see how the second half of this draft plays out for me. I have not been going zero RB or hero RB as much as I have in years past. I did a little bit in this draft because I went different. I went double premium tight end, right? I got value with Javante Williams. Uh, going like a full round past his ADP. But like, I think there's more value this year in leaving the first four rounds. And again, it's going to be tough to do against my viewers because like they want, they know where I want to go in drafts and like they're going to take them before I can take the guys. But like, you know, in a draft where like nobody is paying attention to what I'm doing, it's pretty easy to get out of the first four rounds with two running backs and have an extremely ridiculous team, you know? Uh, especially drafting from the middle, you can get a running back, or so you can go wide receiver, wide receiver, running back, running back with guys like Alvin Kamara in the second uh, or Ezekiel Elliott in the third. Uh, sorry, Ezekiel Elliott in the fourth and Alvin Kamara in the third with two premium 
wide receivers. You can go one wide receiver in the, or one running back in the first and then another one in the third or fourth and end up with those two stud guys that can kind of carry you and then fill in with the zero RB guys around rounds 9, 10, 11 uh, and get yourself three, four running backs a little bit later. I'm skewing more, not like robust running back, right? Not like three running backs in the first, four running backs in the first four rounds uh, with a hyper fragile approach and then just taking no more running backs the rest but not just a shooing running back like I had in previous years either. Cause like I've been more of a bell cow and chill type drafter for a couple of years now where I'm going to take my one guy and then I'm not going to take another one for like four or five, six rounds. Uh, I've tended to draft a second running back before the fifth round more often than not in 2022 drafts. KJ Osborne, solid pick there. They do tend to throw their, or they do project to throw the ball a whole lot more. Uh, Ken Walker could take this job. James Cook's going to have a role from day one. I do like him. Uh, and I'm going to reach down a little bit more. Uh, and I'm going to take Alex Madison, also a seventh round, or sorry, a bye week in week seven. I could have taken Walker to, to vary the bye weeks and hope that as the season goes along, he kind of takes more of a hold of that job. I just don't see that offense being very good. I don't see very much touchdown upside for the Seattle uh, running backs personally. Hardman, Pickens. Pickens is having a good camp too. Cole Komet, the non-copyright frog. Move the mouse up there. Trevor Lawrence. I believe in the talent with Trevor Lawrence where I'm not sure that a lot of other people do. We collectively, I feel like people write off quarterbacks way too early and there's no shades of gray and there's no grades and there's no, you know, there's no levels. There's no tiers. It's, he is MVP caliber and can win a Super Bowl or he should be out of the league and he sucks. I kind of think there's more to it than that. I think there are more levels and layers than people are willing to admit when it comes to young quarterbacks. Let them develop. It takes a while to get into this league and to hit your stride. Add it to the fact that typically you're dealing with a, if you're a first round quarterback, right? If you're a quarterback being drafted early, first half of the first round top 20 picks, you're dealing with a usually a brand new head coach because the last head coach that sucked bad enough to only win five or less games probably got fired. Two, you're dealing with a bottom 10 roster in the league that sucked and lost five or less, or won five or less games the previous year. So you're not stepping into a talent-rich situation. And you've got that adjustment period that you have to make from being a college quarterback where the windows are massive and you're playing against, you know, our mother of the ever festering cold sore tech, you know, every other week and having these windows, like you could throw, your guys are getting eight yards of separation and you're basically throwing practice throws at them. It's like hitting batting practice to go into major league baseball pitching. And it's just really difficult to pull it off. So give these kids some time. Nico Collins going well ahead of ADP. He's really skyrocketed like 155 to 160 on ADP, going at 145 there. I'm assuming that Hustle Manford did not believe that he was going to be available when he got back to about 168, so he took him ahead. I'm fine with that when you're picking on the edges, right? You have to do that calculation sometimes. Like, I don't think this guy is going to be back to me by the time I pick again. So, like, just ch chill on the young quarterback. Like, if they are pedigreed quarterbacks, if they are guys that projected to be solid pros, let them get to like 25, 26 before you decide that they need to be selling insurance somewhere or like in a booth, you know, before you send them out to pasture, let them get some talent around them. Number one poster boy for that in 2022 is going to be Justin Fields. You're going to see so many think pieces and did not think pieces uh, about how bad a player Justin Fields is. Look how bad Justin Fields is. He's terrible. When in reality, he's not. Don't need a quarterback. I like Wandale. I do. But the, the Crowder slander is ridiculous. Tim Patrick's sitting there on top of the player list. Not for me. He's not for me. Tim Patrick went out yesterday for the season. Uh, so if you go to establishtherun.com, you can download the latest Romeo Dubs, favorite of the, the channel and the stream. You can download the latest in... Uh, 
draft rankings all the way through for underdog and easily upload them by clicking on the rankings feature right here if you click this click on new tab let's go we go over here you can then csv upload you download it from un uh, establish the run.com you hit csv upload you put it in from your your download folder and then all of a sudden you have the latest they update them every single morning so if you're going to do a draft i would suggest updating it before you actually enter the draft room and you will have yourself the mo the latest most updated uh draft rankings possible to help you get through your drafts use smizzle.tv slash etr or smizzlife at checkout we'll get you 10 percent off of any of the great products and content over at establish a run if you're a new subscriber i didn't know you were doing this draft you didn't know i was doing this draft i literally tweeted out with the go live tweet that we were going to do this draft i tweeted it out i did everything i could marvin jones kj hamler so kj hamler has been going like here 17 18 but because of the injury to Tim Patrick and the NFL being as much of a next man up league as it is, KJ Hamler has rocketed up draft boards. Odell Beckham uh, ahead of ADP. He's been going around 17th, 18th rounds as well. Pittman with an own team brawl today. All right. Pace, you picked the wrong guy. Who did you want? Okay, pick the right guy now at 172. If you pick the wrong guy at 165, pick the right guy at 172. I do want to know where, like, Dubs is getting all the love from the beat writers and people who are at practice for Green Bay right now. I've been able to pick him up still in around the 16th round, but like that, that may be over. He was free. You could get him with the last pick and drafts up to two weeks ago, but his ADP has really flown since camp opened. And there's been a lot of buzz about him and a lot of beat writer videos on Twitter and everything else uh, that has been going his way. Zach Wilson going 14, 15 picks ahead of ADP there. And take a look at my team real quick. So I've got a one, five, six, two. I'm probably, I mean, probably I'm not going to be drafting another tight end. I have my two elite tight ends and I'm going to fill in everything else beyond that. Most weeks I will not need a running back or a wide receiver in flex. If I have that, great. Devin Duvernay, still no other wide receiver. Duvernay could be on tap for like 95% of the snaps played. He could play like 85 to 95% of the snaps in Baltimore unless they sign another wide receiver they did not sign julio jones they may sign fuller maybe they get odell beckham jr who knows but like if they don't this is their guy that's just who's there top quarterbacks available Tannehill, mac jones jared goff carson wentz i do want mac jones here i do want mac jones here and then i do want kind of jamal williams here herbert's got to have an injury in front of him to make some happen kenny uh, kenneth gainwell is too small to really be an every down back uh, Jamal Williams, in case of any sort of injury, already going to have a, a bit of a role there in Detroit and uh, with the possibility of something bigger if Swift hits the injury list for a week to four weeks. Kevin89, thank you for the 45 months. My sub is as old as me. Which one did you... Hustle Manfred says, damn you, Al. I mean, if I could snipe you from, from turn to turn, you're at the one slot, I'm at the twelve. Which one did you want? Was it Mac Jones? Or, it couldn't have been Mac Jones. You already have a couple of quarterbacks. It had to be Jamal Williams that you wanted there. You went with a zero RB approach. AJ Dillon, Chase Edmonds. Yeah, you were looking for a running back there. Yeah, he didn't make it back to you. There's Will Fuller at 183. I have an awful lot of Will Fuller. Taysom Hill. Final getting Taysom pilled there. Algier really sliding in drafts. He's going lower and lower and lower. Thanks for the Rainmaker help earlier. You scooped the pass up. Hey, nice. What level did you get? Did you go rare, elite, core, legendary? Like, where did you where did you jump in? Started looking into, Vinny says, started looking into DFS stuff last night. Fantasy football season is approaching. Fantasy football draft season is here. Already here. Why is Algiers sliding? I mean, how much touchdown upside does a Falcons running back have? Elite, very nice. So elite, I mean, I don't know what your buy-in level is, but like with elite, they went way down. I bought them too early. I actually bought two for apparently too much money because the price has come down on them but you can theoretically you can buy uh not theoretically realistically you can purchase uh, a legendary level pack which gives you the best chance of getting a rain Mac rain makers level card if you don't have any regular leagues you just do dfs should you join a league though um i mean i everybody who plays daily fantasy had to play season long first right you don't just like hey i've never played fantasy football before now i'm gonna get into daily fantasy like we all come from a fantasy football or fantasy baseball background, right? And to me, drafting is always the most fun part of the season. And with my job as a content creator and like, you know, 
having having to play as not having to play the fact that i play as much high stakes daily fantasy as i play the volume on transactions in my season long leagues got turned way down a decade ago to the point where i just don't do them anymore but like that's where best ball allows me to scratch that itch i don't have to make any transactions in best ball there's no trades there's no waiver wire i don't have to remember on tuesday night to put in waiver ads uh and then Remember to put in a lineup on Thursday to make sure that my guys are optimized. And then again on Saturday, Sunday morning, am I putting in a lineup for that? Blah, blah, blah. You know, DJ, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to look into it. I, I honestly don't know. There goes Kenny Gainwell at 198. Austin Hooper. You know, Austin Hooper was like second in the league the last two or three. I forget if it's the last combined two seasons or the last combined three. I'll have to check. Uh, in terms of targets when his team is inside the three yard line. That's pretty impressive. You saw best ball on DraftKings when you were looking. How does that work, though? Like 500,000. So those are tournaments. You draft against your league, and then if you come in first or second, you advance to the playoff weeks, and then it kind of snakes you into those playoff weeks. All right, I'm up. What quarterbacks are left? Jared Goff? I don't mind Jared Goff. I think Baker's better. I think Baker posts some stats. I'm going to get a third QB here. I'm going to go with Baker. I'm going to go get a, a wide receiver. Sed Wilson in Miami. Cobb not drafting you. Nobody great. Tim Patrick, James Washington, F. I'm going to go with Sed. Sed Wilson is my final wide receiver. So my draft kind of ends up Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Baker Mayfield, Javante Williams, Daryl Patterson, James Cook, Alex Madison, Naheem Hines, Jamal Williams. I went with a zero RB approach, which is why I took a sixth running back with this team just to give me some additional depth and players. Uh, I believe that Javante Williams will be an every week play with the possibility of being a top three running back by the end of the season if things break his way, obviously. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, Chris Godwin, Elijah Moore, Brandon Ayuk, all really solid. Garrett Wilson is the flyer, uh, betting on talent there. Same with Jamison Crowder, betting on offense. Cedric Wilson, my last round pick, my Mr. Irrelevant. And two elite tight ends with Travis Kelsey and Kyle Pitts. This is a sit-and-go league, not a tournament, so I'm not trying to correlate as much. I'm really just trying to pick value and total points and possibilities for upside, uh, as well as putting pressure on the other 11 players that are in that sit-and-go league. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the draft. I wanted to thank all 11 of the viewers on Twitch for joining into this draft. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure that you come over to the channel every once in a while and catch me on the live stream so I can get to know you better because it's easier to do it there if we hang out on live six days a week during the regular NFL season, about four or five days a week during the preseason month of August. So drop by the stream and say hello. Twitch.tv slash Al underscore Smith. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.